Hey, Jeff Callahan here, founder of Become More Compelling, and welcome to another episode of Compelling Convos. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about five different ways to be less shy in your next social interaction. So this is a really important topic. For years, I struggled with being painfully shy, and it was really hard because I knew I had a lot that I could contribute in a social situation, but I just didn't. And every time I didn't, I felt like it was, it was fulfilling. Uh, that self-fulfilling prophecy of describing myself as shy and then my results pointed to the fact that yes, I was shy. So let's dive in. Shyness is common. Everybody feels shy at one point or another. There's no such thing as a person who's 100% outgoing and confident 100% of the time. That person doesn't exist. I think a really helpful way to kind of reframe shyness is that these are just shy moments that you have. You aren't shy, these are just moments where you maybe don't have something to say or you think oh maybe i shouldn't say that that doesn't mean you're necessarily shy it just means that it's a moment where you feel shy it's important to really key in on that narrative so if you're self-describing yourself as shy or you're thinking about yourself as shy it can be really damaging because the the more you think or describe yourself as shy it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and it becomes harder to kind of break out of that. Internalize the fact everyone has shy moments and that's all they are. Treat them as a blip rather than a huge kind of wall or boulder that you have to like move to get out of the way. Like, look, it's just a moment and it will pass. If you've ever done any sort of meditation, you know that like thoughts, feelings, and emotions, they just bubble up and then they pass and then you're free to do something different in the next moment. And the reality is, the more actions you take that aren't shy, and we're gonna talk about some of these tips next, the more actions you take, that actually starts to shift that narrative from, oh, I'm shy or I'm so quiet, to, you know what? I've actually come a long way and I am not as shy as I used to be, and in some moments I am outgoing. And so the more we work on those actions, our identity tends to take care of itself. And for more on this, see episode 20 of Compelling Convos, talking about faking it until you make it. All right, next tip, practice not being shy in low stakes environments. So say that you get invited to go to some huge party, but you know that like, look, I feel really, really shy in large social gatherings. Well, maybe you shouldn't go to that party. Maybe you should practice not being shy in a smaller environment rather than a huge environment where there's gonna be more pressure. You can always work your way up to that larger environment if you want to. So a good low stakes environment, if you're just starting out, practice with your server at lunch, practice with a barista at a coffee shop. It's okay, like ask how their shift's going, be interested in what they say. And that's a very simple way to start getting out of the routine of shyness. Uh, what's nice about kind of uh, servers and baristas is like you may never see them again, so the stakes are pretty low if you happen to mess up. We want to practice in low stakes environment and then graduate to a uh, higher stakes environment. So we're pushing our comfort zone. We're not kind of barreling right through and breaking it. If you do that, then you're less likely to keep practicing. And the name of the game is consistent pushing of that comfort zone so that over time, it becomes easier to do the things that were once scary uh, because your comfort zone is way out here now. Prep for social interactions. So I'm a perfect preparer by nature. I love prepping as much as I can. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the downsides of that in a moment. There are certain things that you can prep in advance of social situations, more to make yourself comfortable so that in the moment, you won't be wrapped up in like, oh, am I talking enough? Am I too shy? Am I not? Like, you don't have to think about any of that. You can just think of, okay, well, you know what? I've prepped these things and now I can pull them out if the conversation happens to get slow. So the first thing that you can prep is open questions. Questions are a great way to uh, recharge a conversation that might be in danger of sort of uh, fizzling out. My favorite types of questions are open questions. So closed questions are questions that can be answered with a yes or no. Like, do you like carrots? Yes, no. <laughs> open questions are questions that force the other person to think a little bit and share with you something that's longer than a yes or no response. So a good example of an open question. Hey, what was the best part about your weekend? Hmm, well, and, and what's nice about the response is that because it's longer than yes or no, 
you have multiple hooks that you can grab onto and continue that conversation. So say that someone says, oh yeah, we, we set up a table tennis table in the uh, carport and we, we played uh, table tennis. Oh wow, that's cool. How long have you been, have you been playing for? Uh, do you know any trick shots? Like there are a bunch of different avenues to go down rather than uh, a closed question, which is like, okay, well, yes or no, there's only so much you can do with that. So my advice to you, prep three open-ended questions that are pretty general that you can pull out at your next social interaction. This might be a, a dinner party. It might be a Zoom meeting that you're gonna hop on. So in the comments below, I want you to let me know what is just one situation where you could use open-ended questions. The next thing you can prep is stories. We're not gonna go too deep into stories in this Compelling Combos episode, but stories are a great way to share something about yourself and also make a movie in someone's head. So I did a podcast with a world-class storytelling coach, Marsha Shandur, and that's episode number four on Become More Compelling Radio, my podcast. And her advice was you're creating a movie in someone's head using really visual descriptive language, very, very good. And you don't need to uh, belabor the story with a lot of detail. So unless it's relevant to the story, did it happen in 2014 or 2015? It doesn't really matter. You know, don't spend valuable uh, resources and, and, and uh, spend people's valuable attention span on getting the dates or, or that kind of thing exactly right if it's not relevant to the story. So for more on stories, check out that podcast episode. Next, recon. I love this one. This is great. So a thing that you can do if you are going to say a meetup where you don't know anyone. Well, you might ask yourself, what do I have in common with people at this meetup? Well, I'll tell you one thing that you have in common, the meetup itself. Like everyone at that meetup has that event is a shared experience. So you can talk about that shared experience. What if you're going to meet someone that you've already met before? Say that you're uh, on a Zoom meeting and you know it's, it's Bill from accounting. If you know a little bit about Bill before that meeting, you could say, oh, well, I know Bill likes baseball and I know that he has two kids. So you could, talk to him about those two things because those are uh, interests that you know that he has so you can bring those up. If you happen to also be into baseball, then hey, you guys are gonna have a really good conversation because you both share that interest, and that interest overlaps for both of you. Before every social interaction, if you have an idea of the people who are gonna be there, it could even be a, a friend of your significant other. Like you could say, hey, so what's this person into? And that gives you a little bit more uh, conversational fodder where, where you can look up a story or whatever it might be just to uh, bring something up in conversation that you know that that person will be interested in. And that's why it's really important to know a little bit about a lot. I've talked about this in the, in the past, the iceberg effect where just knowing a little bit about a wide variety of topics really helps you because you can connect with people about different things. You don't have to know a lot about any given thing if you don't want to, but it, it helps to be able to know a little bit about a lot. So you do that by consuming podcasts, reading articles, you know, just immerse yourself in a lot of different things. It could even be like the Wikipedia article of the day, like the random article. Uh, and just know a little bit about a lot so that you can be flexible when people bring up different topics. And remember, you've got your stories, you've got your recon, and you've got your open questions. So if at any moment, you know, you've used those and, you've, you've, and you feel that momentary shyness, remember that it's just a moment and moments pass. And then you've got your recon, your questions, and your stories there as backup to get yourself back on track so that you can correct course quickly. So a final word on preparation, don't fall into the preparation paradox. So you, ne you don't wanna be in a situation where you spend all your time game planning different contingencies on like, what if they say this, I should say that. Like, look, that is a losing battle. Jeff Bezos famously said that if you get 70% of available information, that's fine. If you go for that 80 or 90 or 100%, you're being way too slow. So get just enough uh, preparation. You, you might have your three open questions. You might have your three stories. You might have your three little pieces of recon for uh, the person that you're gonna be hanging out with, and that's it. And then just trust yourself. You are more capable than you might think. Just go in there and have a good time. And if you end up using none of the stuff that you've prepared, that's fine too. But just have it so it makes you comfortable. Build competence, 
and confidence will follow. Something that I've done with my coaching clients is if they're heading into a social situation, I've set goals for them. So that may look like bronze level, silver level, and gold level. Now, am I handing out Olympic medals? What's going on? I wish I could. If you're going into a social situation and you know that like, okay, here's the minimum success I wanna have, maybe it's just contributing one thing to the conversation, that's great. That's, that's like bronze level practice and that's good. Silver level might be, okay, I'm gonna contribute a couple of times and I'm gonna focus on being really approachable while I do it. You know, I'm gonna smile, my enthusiasm's gonna be a little bit higher, my energy level's gonna be a little higher, I'm gonna uh, give them the eyebrow flash. So that's silver level. And gold level might be, I wanna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and feel great while doing it. And that might be gold, that's your stretch goal. For your next social interaction, think about, okay, what's, a, what's the minimum thing I would like to do What's the maximum thing I would like to do? And that's your bronze and your gold. And then think of something in the middle for, for silver. Like, okay, I'm gonna go on that Zoom meeting. I'm gonna speak up once, I'm gonna speak up twice. Third, I'm gonna ask people how their weekend was because I've got those open questions that I just created. So it all, it all kind of uh, uh, clicks together. All right, next tip for how to not be shy. Don't compare your inside with other people's outside. Don't compare yourself to others. You might look at other people and you think, wow, that person is so outgoing, that person's so charismatic. Well, that is someone else and that is not you. The only person you should be comparing yourself to is you. So if you look on Instagram, you look on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and you see like, oh, these people are all crushing it and they're being so social, I'm so jealous. Well, you're already in a bad position there because the only person you should compare yourself to is yourself from yesterday. And everyone has different stories that make up who they are in this current moment. And it's very tempting for you to look at someone else's exterior and compare that to, to how you feel on the inside. And the reality is we can't view their internal thoughts. We can't view their internal emotions. They may be struggling mightily uh, to start that conversation, but they just look natural while doing it. And that's completely possible. So. Keep in mind that the more you compare yourself to others, you're setting yourself up for uh, less than success. You're setting yourself up for some unrealistic expectations. Remember, everyone has shy moments, everybody. So as long as I am consistently com improving over time, that is exactly what I want. I'm just improving that 1% per day. And I'm doing that by thinking of those bronze, silver, gold practice levels for myself. I've got my recon, my open questions, and my stories. And so I am ready when it comes to that social interaction and I'm not gonna compare myself to others and I'm gonna realize that shy moments just happen and they tend to pass. So that's our episode for today. And a couple different ways you can get me a question or a topic you want me to cover in the future. You can hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at the Jeff Callahan. You can send me an email at jeff at becomemorecompelling.com or you can drop a comment below with what you'd like me to cover in a future episode and I'll cover it. Talk soon. Hey, a couple of quick things before you leave. One, I've got a subscribe button over here. If you like this video and you don't wanna miss out on a future video, hit that subscribe button. Two, if you uh, like this video, hit the like button. That helps other awesome people like you find it. And three, leave a comment if you have any feedback for me or if you have a topic or suggestion that you want me to cover in a future video. Thanks.